Good morning, SK. I'm James. And I'm Kia. Hey, James, I heard about the Mariners going to the playoffs. What a shocker. I know, right? I hope no one gets sick. I heard about this new disease named after a baseball skill. Oh, really? Yeah, it's catching. Are you serious? A joke? This early? <sighs> Fine. I guess I'll start the show then. If you haven't picked up your student ID for this school year, please go to the book room during non-class time. For those students who have missing ID cards, picture retakes are happening now. During your lunch, you can go to the gym foyer and get your picture taken. This is your last chance because they will be leaving at 12.30. The PSAT is coming to SK for juniors on October 25th. It will take place in the gym and don't worry, you're already registered to take it. This is a great chance to take practice for the SAT and to be eligible for scholarships. There are some seats available to sophomores, but they are first come first serve. If you want a chance at the PSAT, see Mrs. Wood in the library. Tired of taking the bus? Well, we still have some parking passes left. Students with a valid driver's license who are interested in purchasing one can sign up at the security office. Now into sports news. Tanner Rockefeld and Tio Aguilo both won their singles matches yesterday against Puyallup. The freshman volleyball team won 3-0 against Clahalia. Last night was a big night for our ladies' soccer teams. For the JV team, Layla scored the first goal within the first four minutes of play. The next goal came from Corbin in the second half, securing the win. Varsity also had a great night. It being pink out night, the team showed their support for those in their lives that had been affected by breast cancer. It was a great back and forth game until the half where South started taking the lead. In the last seven minutes of play, they, they scored another goal, locking in a 4-2 win over Bell and Romain. Way to go, SK. As many of you know, Monday will be Indigenous Peoples Day, but what is it? To tell us, we have Mr. Haver. Hello and good day to you. My name is Matthew Haver and I'm your new Native American and Alaska Native Support Specialist here in SK. Next Monday, October 10th, we'll all get a day off to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. And the greeting you see below says, good day to you in Lachutseed, the traditional language of the Suquamish people whose ancestral territory the South Kitsap School District rests on. The Suquamish people hunted and gathered food and medicinal plants in the forests and marshes between Long Lake and Puget Sound, including Banner Forest. Hunting parties and family groups traveled inland throughout the year from winter villages right here in Olala and at Colby near Curly Creek. Olala is actually an English transliteration of a name from the Lachutzi language. Called Taka on early maps, the location here in Olala had a cedar longhouse and a palisade. Cattails in the wetlands were collected and used to weave mats for cushions, canoe covers for sleeping and for summer housing. Baskets were made from coiled cedar roots and were used for collecting berries and were so expertly woven that they were watertight and could be used to carry water and even for cooking. Clams and shellfish were collected from the beaches and salmon were caught as they ascended through Olala Creek and were dried. Along with Colby and Olala, the Squamish had winter villages at Point Bolin, Paulsbow, Silverdale, Chico, Point White, Linwood Center, Eagle Harbor, Point Madison, Battle Point, and of well, course Suquamish. The best known winter village was Old Man House, which was the home of Chief Seattle and Chief Kidsap, who our county and school district are named after. And speaking of names, some of you may be asking, well, what happened to Columbus Day? Well, 45 years ago, the idea was proposed that Indigenous Peoples Day replaced Columbus Day as a way to recognize that Indigenous peoples were the real first inhabitants of the Americas, including the land that eventually became the United States. In 1989, the first state officially recognized the holiday, South Dakota, ancestral home of the Santee Dakota, Yankton Nakota, and Teton Lakota people. As of this year, the holiday is observed or honored by 14 states, as well as South Dakota, which celebrates Native Americans Day, Hawaii, which celebrates Discoverers Day, and Alabama, which celebrates American Indian Heritage Day. Because Washington State doesn't recognize Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day doesn't replace it, but many cities and school districts, like ours, do recognize it. Indigenous Peoples Day is not yet a federal holiday, but last year, on October 8, 2021, President Joe Biden became the first U.S. president to issue a proclamation recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day, writing, Since time immemorial, American Indians, Alaskan Natives, and Native Hawaiians have built vibrant and diverse cultures, safeguarding land, language, spirit, knowledge, and tradition across the generations. On Indigenous Peoples Day, our nation celebrates the invaluable contributions and resilience of Indigenous peoples, recognizes their inherent sovereignty, and commits to honoring their federal government trust and treaty obligations to tribal nations. Here in South Kitsap, we have students from all 32 Washington State tribes, including the Suquamish people and over 50 others from around the rest of the U.S. My own great-grandmother, Mary, was Klingit and came from Alaska, 
and many of your teachers and coaches and school staff share Indigenous heritage as well. So when we celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, we're really celebrating each other. The Klingit people have a word for thank you, gunoshish, but it also has a second meaning. It would not be possible without you. So next Monday, we'll honor the people who came before us and acknowledge that our lives in this beautiful part of the world called South Kitsap would not be possible without them. So, gunoshish to our friends, the Suquamish people, and gunoshish to you for watching. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Gunoshish, Mr. Haver. Back to the news. Juniors and seniors, if you're thinking of joining the military or are not sure what career you want to pursue, consider taking the ASVAB on Wednesday here at SK. The ASVAB is a free career exploration test. You can sign up in the Career Center. While you're down there, you can sign up for upcoming college visitations like UW Bothell, which will be by Tuesday. Seniors, Washington State University is offering two SK students a Regents Scholarship. If you're going to Wazoo and have a GPA of 3.6 or higher, reach out to Ms. Tolly or Ms. Hayes by next Friday. And finally, into club news. Shades of Color will have their first meeting Thursday. Stay tuned for more information and flyers around the school. If you want to know more of what SOC is all about, please see Ms. Lockhart or Ms. Vega. The clubs meeting today are Interact, Catan Club, and of course, Builders of Unity. That was a pretty long show. I know, right? Well, I guess that's it from us. No, no, no. One last thing. Uh, to, one last thing. Here's something to ponder on. Why do we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game when we're already there? Seriously? You know what? It's better than a joke. Oh, you want a joke? Fine then. Why was the mummy sent into the game? Why was the mummy sent into the game as a pinch hitter? Why did I even ask? Why? Why? Why was he? Because their manager knew once he sent the mummy in, the game would be wrapped up. <laughs> Swagger, why did you add so many in this time? Is it because we cut you off last time? Look, I'm sorry.